Hello and welcome to our act of worship today. Welcome wherever and whenever you are joining us. It is good to be together in this way with the help of technology. My name is Anne and I am one of the ministers of the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale in beautiful South Cumbria. Some of the most inspiring people I know or I know of are those who have suffered at the hands of others and yet are able to forgive those who have caused their suffering. Famous people like Nelson Mandela, who acknowledged that on leaving prison after 27 years for challenging the unjust apartheid system, if he did not forgive, leave his bitterness and hatred behind, he would still be in prison. Or more ordinary people like G Walker, whose son Anthony was murdered in Highton in Liverpool in 2005, just for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. She was amazing in her witness to the love and forgiveness of God in her own ability and willingness to forgive the killers of her son. But she also acknowledged the truth that not to forgive would have been harmful to her and the rest of her family. In the long term, as harbouring anger, bitterness and revenge is not a route to peace and life in all its fullness. I'm not sure I would have been as willing or able to forgive if something like that had happened to me. I'd like to think I would, but I'm sure it's probably easier said than done. But forgiveness is central to our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. In our Bible reading today, we hear something about how we should relate to each other, especially when we disagree, when things are not going well. Surely such things never happen in church life, not between fellow Christians, surely not. The reading follows on from the parable of the lost sheep and is followed by the parable of the unforgiving servant. Maybe more on that one next week. Both parables remind us that things don't always go smoothly, but that we are called to be found and forgiven and to forgive others in our turn. So let us hear our reading from Matthew's Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel of St Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 20 if another member of the church sins against you go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone if the member listens to you you have regained that one but if you are not listened to take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the wake of the Brexit vote and all the discussion and debate about a divided nation, there was a television programme that featured the artist Grayson Perry embarking upon a project to create a, an artwork two vases, one representing the people who had voted to leave, the other 
representing the people who had voted to remain. And he invited to pe people to send him uh, images, phrases, uh, pictures, photographs, things that conveyed all that they loved about Britain, things that uh, expressed their values or expressed what they thought Britishness was all about. So the colours and the images uh, weren't his. What he had to do was bring them together to create these two vases that were going to be exhibited together as one artwork. And what he also did was he listened to people from both groups. He, he met with people who had voted to leave, met with people who had voted to remain, listened carefully to them. And at the end of it all, he made a fascinating observation. He said that what surprised him most was how much the two groups of people had in common. And the vases convey that. They look almost identical in size. In fact, it represents the size of the vote. They're mostly blue. They share a lot of the same images. And he actually asked both the Remain group and the Leave groups to pick their favourite symbol. And they both chose the same thing. I wonder if you can guess what they chose. They both picked the teapot as their favourite. And his conclusion was that we have much more in common than separates us. And that's somewhat different from the message that we tend to get, especially from the media. For me, the artist offers a very valuable insight. In order to create something good, you have to observe carefully. You have to listen carefully. You have to look at something from different sides, different perspectives. It takes a lot of effort. And today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, all about the effort required to make something good, in this case, to heal division. Jesus' words echo what we read in Leviticus, but the message underlying them is don't keep your distance. Don't walk down the path of blame, of prejudice, of judgment, of fake news, because that's a path that will always lead you away from someone. No, walk the path that brings you together, where you have to meet, where you have to listen to one another, where you have to see things from each other's perspective. Why? Because reconciliation is at the heart of the gospel. And when Jesus invited people to come and follow him, he was inviting them to be a reconciling community, to work at reconciliation between people, to work at reconciliation between us and those who've gone before the past, as we were thinking about last week to work at reconciliation and this beautiful planet, which in a way is reconciliation between us and those who will come after us. And it takes a lot of effort. Jesus had just told a story, a lovely story, about a shepherd searching out the one lost sheep. And of course the cross is this amazing picture of the extent to which God will go to search us out, to reconcile to reunite. It's the story of the shepherd being lived out in the most amazing way. This statue is by Josefina de Vanconcelos and it's called Reconciliation and depicts a man and a woman embracing each other. When it was first created in 1977 it was originally called Reunion there's an interesting story behind it, and, and this is what Josephina, the artist, said about it. The sculpture was originally conceived in the aftermath of the Second World War. Europe was in shock. People were stunned. I read in a newspaper about a woman who crossed Europe on foot to find her husband, and I was so moved that I made the sculpture. Then I thought that it wasn't only about the reunion of two people, but hopefully a reunion of nations who had been fighting. A man and a woman embracing each other. Behind that, the story of the woman walking on foot across Europe. 
1994, the statue underwent repairs. And then it was unveiled for a second time, but this time with the title Reconciliation. And then in 1995, to mark the 50th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, bronze casts of the statue were placed in the ruins of Coventry Cathedral and in the Peace Garden in Hiroshima in Japan. And since then, bronze casts have also been placed in the Stormont Estate in Belfast and as part of the Berlin Wall Memorial. A statue of a woman and a man embracing. And behind that, the story of the effort required to bring that about. The effort required to bring about reconciliation. The Gospel is all about reconciliation. I love the passage in Philippians, a reminder of the extent to which God went to bring about reconciliation. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Reconciliation is at the heart of the gospel. God searching us out, drawing us back to himself, reuniting us so that we may live in the warmth of his love and be a reconciling movement. Reconciliation between people, living that out. Reconciliation between us and the past, those who've gone before us. And reconciliation with us and those who will come after us in the way that we care for this beautiful planet. Reconciliation, the very heart of the gospel. And today's passage ends with some wonderful words. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And we often take that to have a universal meaning. But it does look back to people getting together to try and resolve differences. Hold your conversation as if you were in the presence of Jesus. Because he promised to be there. Be Jesus to one another because he's with you. See Jesus in the other person because he is with them. And I wonder if our encounters, our meetings will be different if we always remembered those words of Jesus, that promise where two or three are gathered in my name, I am with you. There was once an old monastery that had somehow lost its vitality. Yes, the routines continued to be performed, but somehow there was no energy, there was no life. And the abbot was sad by what he saw, but didn't know what to do about it. So he went to see the old hermit who lived in the woods. And they sat and ate a meal of bread and cheese and wine together. And then the hermit said to the abbot, You and your monks have lost the fire of God. But I'm going to tell you a secret. And you can only ever repeat it once, then you must never speak about it out loud again. And the hermit said to the abbot, the Christ is among you. Well, the abbot went back to the monastery and called all the monks together and said, look, I've got something to tell you, but I can only ever say it once, then we must never talk about it out loud again. The hermit says, one of us is the Christ. Well, the monks began to wonder to themselves, is it John with a big nose? Or is it Matthew who falls asleep at prayers? Or could it be me? And what happened? Well, the monks began to treat each other with a very special love and reverence and respect. After all, when they were speaking to one another, they might be talking to the Christ. Their words, gentle, compassionate, encouraging, and there was a quality about them which you couldn't describe but was evident. And vitality returned to that monastery. And not only that, 
it had an amazing effect on the whole community around. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the Father of all people, and we bring our prayers knowing that you will hear us and help us. Hear our prayer, Lord, for the whole family of your church, both here and around Kirby Lonsdale and further afield. Grant that we may build up in our faith and always show in our lives the love we see in Jesus. Give courage to those who find it hard to follow you, to those who are finding it difficult to have faith because of personal hardship or tragedy, to those who are made to suffer for their faith. Let your Holy Spirit support them and may all Christians stand firm in the hope that your kingdom of love will come. We pray for our country and thank you for the many freedoms which we enjoy and we've taken for granted. We ask that we will be able to accept the present restrictions on some of those freedoms, so that we may all play a part in keeping everyone in our community free from illness. We pray for our Queen and for those who govern our nation. Give them health and strength, wisdom and courage, 
so that they may carry out their many duties in the best interests of all our people. We pray for the leaders of our churches, nationally and locally, and all those who are spreading the message of your love. We pray that you will continue to strengthen, guide and enlighten them in all that they do. We pray for one another. Help us to grow together in faith and love, rejoicing in your fatherhood as we bring our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for children and young people. We pray for children and young people as they go about their learning in very different circumstances at the start of this new school year. We pray for children who are spending their first hours away from home in nursery or preschool. We pray for those children who are returning to school this week and are facing completely new challenges and experiences as they extend their learning. We pray for young people who are going to college or university, those who are starting new employment or taking up apprenticeships, and for those for whom the future seems very uncertain and insecure. We think of all children and young people, praying that they may be worthy of the best in our society and society worthy of their potential. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those whose lives have been badly damaged by the coronavirus epidemic. We hold in our hearts those whose lives have been damaged by grief and the loss of family members and friends. We ask your blessing on those who have lost their livelihoods, their security, their homes and their hope. And we pray for the work of the support agencies and those providing assistance. We pray for those who have been isolated by the epidemic and ask that you will help us in showing our Christian love to those suffering in loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for people who are ill, wherever they may be, in hospital or at home. Give them courage, hope and peace and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. We pray that the skills and knowledge of those who care for the sick are fully used to help and to heal. We pray especially for those who have no one to help them, that in their loneliness they may know that you are with them. Father of all, we pray for those we love but no longer see. Grant them your peace, and let light perpetually shine upon them. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We remember before God those who have died, and we light a candle in our hearts to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we thank you for giving us so much to enjoy in the world. Open our eyes to see the beauty around us as the summer turns to autumn. We thank you for the touch of coolness in the air that gives us a new burst of energy. For the colouring of trees that shows us the creativity of the divine art artist. For the falling leaves that uh, reveal the strength of the branches, for the harvest that brings us gratitude for the beauty of our land, for this change of seasons that reveals the circle of life. God of all seasons, as you transform the earth, transform us by your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We bring all our prayers together as we say together the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you to everyone who's contributed to this time of prayer and reflection. The picture that's featured a lot today is of the statue that's in the ruins of Coventry Cathedral called Reconciliation. You may know that after the bombing of the cathedral in 1940, the words Father Forgive were inscribed in the ruins behind the altar. And those words are used as the response in the Coventry Litany of Reconciliation, which is prayed every weekday at noon in the modern cathedral, but on a Friday in the ruins of the old cathedral. And they're also prayed across the world by the community of the Cross of Nails. So we're going to end today with that Litany of Reconciliation, just an opportunity to read and reflect on those words. But first a prayer of blessing. Go now into the world in peace. Hold fast to that which is good. Do not repay evil for evil. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances. And may God's blessing, the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon each one of you this day and always. Amen.